One of my favorite things about being a blockchain developer is that there's so many different ways to make money with these skills. Of course, you can earn a paycheck at a job, you can become a freelancer, but there's all these other ways to make money on the side or have an alternative primary income stream completely. And one of the ways to do this is create your own Web 3.0 application. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to create your first Web 3.0 application, a profitable one, step by step. I'm gonna talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself. So before we get into that, if you're around here, Hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how to build your first profitable blockchain application step by step. So the application I'm gonna focus on this video is the one of the best applications for beginners to build, not just beginner coders, but also beginner business people, because even if you're an expert coder, you're probably still a beginner in business, and it's important to admit that before you get started. So you don't want to pick the most epically hard problem to solve. You want to pick something that's going to have a higher likelihood of success. So what is that? Well, it's going to be an NFT collection. So launching an NFT collection is one of the best apps to build as a blockchain developer, especially as a beginner, because it's a well-worn groove. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's super low risk. Basically, you don't need any money to get started or very little money. The upside is big. Some NFT projects break in millions of dollars. Coding implementation is pretty straightforward. You don't have to create everything from scratch. And lastly, I'll say air quotes, you know, anybody can do it. And what I mean by that is, you know, we have a 12 year old boy here who created uh, an NFT collection worth over $400,000 in his summer holiday. And also, you know, a 12 year old girl here who made $4 million in NFTs. Uh, with her collection. And because it's such an amazing opportunity, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do inside the NFT Masterclass on Thursday, November 3rd. Inside, I'm gonna show you how to launch your own NFT project from scratch, even if you're not an artist, even if you're not an advanced developer, how to create the artwork, smart contracts, website, and how to market it. So hold your spot with the link down below. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty step-by-step -step implementation of launching your first profitable NFT collection. So step one is to pick an idea, okay? an idea or a niche or a concept, okay? Basically, you wanna have some sort of theme for your NFT collection. You can see examples of this, like the Board Ape Yacht Club. There are a couple of different strategies here. You could come with an entirely brand new theme that nobody's ever done before that could give you a competitive edge in this space. Or you could do a theme on a variation, or excuse me, a variation on a theme where you take something that somebody's already done and tweak it slightly. Just make sure you're not infringing on any intellectual property rights. So those are some ideas of what you can do. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to basically just rip off somebody else's uh, NFT collection, basically copy their images and then put them on a different blockchain, okay? That's going to land you into a ton of trouble. And also it's going to make your project probably not have very high odds of good long-term success because people think it's just completely derivative. All right, so once you settle on a concept for your NFT collection, that's step one. Now it's time to move on to step two. Uh, which is essentially to determine the tokenomics of your NFT collection. Because at the end of the day, NFTs are tokens. They're non-fungible tokens, right? It's different cryptocurrencies. But you still want to have to figure some things out. Like, you know, number one, how many NFTs are going to be in your collection? There's lots of different numbers out there. You know, 10,000 items is a really popular number. That's like what CryptoPunks did, what Bored Apes did. You see people using, uh, you know, uh, triple or quad, excuse me, quadruple digit significant numbers below that, like 8,888, 5,555. You can pick however much artwork you want to. Just realize you're going to have to create that much artwork. Next, you have to figure out how people are going to get your NFTs in the first place. So the most popular way is essentially to mint NFTs on a website. So people go to your website, you advertise the day that you're going to drop the NFT. They show up with their wallet on that day and they create the NFTs from scratch until they're sold out. Okay, so a really common way to do this is for people to pay a, a small fee whenever they mint the NFTs. That goes to you as a developer. That's how you monetize it directly. Um, so you got to figure out, are you going to do that? Or are you going to do like a free to mint NFT where people don't have to pay anything? Okay, that can distribute the NFTs a lot faster, especially if you have a plan for a way for those NFTs to accrue value. Um, you know, over time, maybe holding back a portion of the NFTs yourself that you could sell for a profit to help cover some of those. Uh, you know, proceeds. Yeah, that's one option to get created with it. The most straightforward way is just basically have, you know, charge people a small fee in order to mint them and that money goes directly to you as a developer. That's going to lower your risk and the project actually being profitable. All right, so once you've figured out the concept for your NFT, once you've figured out the tokenomics, like how many there's actually going to be into the collection, next is to implement the artwork itself. Now, there's a couple different paths you can go here. So if you are an artist, you can, of course, just create the artwork yourself, okay? Uh, if you're not an artist, of course, you can hire out talent to do this, okay? You could easily get on a website like Upwork.com and find people who have already created artwork for other NFT collections that are familiar with the format, and then you can just give them the specifications for your concept, and they can create it. So when you do this, what you want to do, essentially, is create a generative NFT collection. So 
you essentially want to create some sort of uniform standard for how you de design this. You can see all these NFTs uh, are in squares, okay? All of them uh, are essentially the same placement on the square, all right? And they all are really just a variation upon the same shape with some different attributes. So what you want to do is determine, you know, how many different facial expressions you're going to have, how many body types you're going to have, uh, other variants like eyes, nose, um, you know, hats, you know, all, all that type of stuff to get to that number that you want to get to to create your entire collection. And then you want to take that to the drawing board, literally, okay, and create the uh, attributes for each of that inside of an app like, you know, Photoshop or uh, some similar even like Canva, okay? I'll show you the full export uh, on how to do that exactly step-by-step step inside that NFT masterclass, but that's that's the overview of what you need to do here. Again, you can do it yourself if you're already a whiz with Photoshop, you're an artist or not. You can just hire out the talent and give them the specifications on exactly how to do it. All right, so now that you've got the artwork in place, now it's time to focus on the actual coding implementation, okay? So the good news is the, the coding is pretty straightforward, okay? There's only a few things you really have to decide. Um, and so essentially, here's what the architecture looks like. You know, a user connects their wallet to a browser that talks to a website. It talks to a smart contract deployed to a blockchain that governs your NFT. And that allows people to mint the NFTs directly on the contract. You can see it spits them out one, two, three here. It goes back to the user's wallet. And then if let's just assume that they're going to you know, buy the NFTs or you know, pay to mint, then that ETH would go directly to you, the developer who created the application in the first place. So, you know, you have to decide, first of all, which blockchain that you're going to use, okay? If you don't know exactly what that is, my number one recommendation is Ethereum, okay? That's where all the high-value, uh, or at least most of the high-value NFT collections that have gained a lot of value over time have started, at least. The other big reason is that if you write your NFT contracts for Ethereum, it's going to be really easy to port them over to an, another ecosystem if you want to do that, or you choose not to put it on Ethereum. Let's we'll say you want to put it on Polygon, you can easily put it on Polygon, uh, the only restrictions that you'd have there is putting it on a chain like, you know, maybe Solana, for example. That's because you're creating the smart contracts in Solidity, okay? And Solidity is an EVM compatible programming language, which means any EVM compatible chain can run your NFT smart contract. And so when you're creating this smart contract, you, of course, want to implement in Solidity, all right? Uh, if you don't know what you want, exactly what you want to do, I highly recommend using the ERC721 standard. That's just a token standard that determines how NFTs work, okay? That's going to make it compatible on uh, NFT marketplaces like OpenSea. It's going to make it compatible with other blockchain wallets people are familiar with, okay? And then I highly recommend essentially having the minting functionality directly on the NFT smart contract itself to reduce the complexity, okay? Uh, this is all pretty straightforward stuff, and you really don't have to be an advanced coder in order to implement this. Now, here's the other side of things. Let's say, you know, before I was talking about you don't have to be an artist, you could hire uh, an artist to do this, okay? Another thing is, uh, if you're not a developer, um, you know, you can really follow my exact instructions on how to do this, or likewise, you can follow the instructions, get an idea on how to do it, and then hire out the talent uh, to create this itself. Uh, even, you know, when you're talking about collaborating with other people, you could also have some incentive on the upside for the project if other people agree to participate. All right, so once you've got the smart contracts together to govern your NFT collection, now it's time to actually uh, you know, create a website so people can mint the NFTs and learn about your project, okay? So I'm just gonna pull up a random NFT uh, example here. So basically, you know, here's an example of, a, of an NFT minting website. I'm not endorsing this project. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a rug pool, it's not a sponsored video. I just pull up a really quick example. So essentially, this advertises the collection. It shows a story that kind of goes in line with the concept that like I was talking about before. Uh, you have the ability to essentially click on the... Uh, you can see the tokenomics here. You can see the trades. You can see the floor price, uh, how many owners there are. Okay. Um, you can essentially click through with your wallet and then actually do the minting on the website itself. That's the whole point. So basically, whenever your minting date arrives, people can connect with their wallet, all right, with the browser on your website, and then that can talk to the smart contract directly, click the mint button, pay you the ETH, all right, and then they get the NFTs. And a website like this is pretty straightforward to create. In many cases, you can just follow a template and then add it and customize it for yourself. So now let's talk about how to get your NFT collection found so that people actually pay money to mint it, because really, at the end of the day, that's what you need to do in order to create a profitable NFT collection. So the best way to do this really is, uh, you know, to pursue a couple different strategies, all right? I highly recommend doing a boots on the ground approach where there is actually some organic uh, community happening around this. So essentially, you know, creating a Discord channel uh, where people can join it to learn about your project and getting inside of other Discord channels and networking with people. Also on Twitter, I right? drive them that Discord to get the engagement, build the community so that you can do all that before your NFT drops. So I highly recommend you know, you can develop your project sort of in R&D mode, but simultaneously, you want to be building that marketing channel before you launch, okay? The last thing you want to do is launch an NFT collection with nobody to look for it, all right? 
Uh, you can also bootstrap that a little bit, kind of give it uh, you know, some initial jolt with friends and family participation, okay? Uh, and that's not probably going to be enough to create a massive project, but it can be a small spark that can actually, you know, start to propel that flame a little more. Another option is to get on, uh, you know, NFT drop website like this, okay? Basically working on paid sponsorship in order to get your project listed. So you can see it. Again, here's the examples. So you can just look on... Uh, you know, Google to find lots of different NFT drop websites. But through pursuing, you know, one or all these things, preferably all, that's a pretty good way to get started. All right, so that's an overview of how to create a profitable NFT collection step by step. Okay, again, so this is one of the best ideas for beginners to build. Even if you're an advanced coder already, you're still probably a beginner uh, in a business sense. And you really don't want to reinvent the wheel when you're doing this. You want to go after a well-worn groove with a clear implementation uh, path to reduce uh, the downside risk for yourself. And again, this is something that, you know, air quotes, anybody can do. That's what I mean when I say like, you've got a 12-year-old boy who made $400,000 uh, in his summer holiday and also a 12-year-old girl who made $4 million uh, on her collection as well. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do, how to create your own NFT collection step-by-step -step inside the NFT Masterclass on Thursday, November 3rd. And inside, I'm going to show you how to create your own NFT collection, even if you're not an artist, even if you're not an advanced developer, how to create the artwork contracts, website, talk about the marketing. So make sure you sign up with the link down below to hold your spots today. All right, so that's all I've got. As always, subscribe to this channel, smash that like button if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.